Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. What we're doing right now is uh, we've got the UI integrated with Domain, which is awesome, and well, hoo -hoo. <laughs> we used to have it integrated. Um, wow. But um, what we have, so let me tell you what I thought we were going to do, and then we'll go fix whatever that problem was. Um, we have our UI integrated with the Domain layer. But um, I wanted to pull out the domain concept of a year, and I was pull as I was pulling that out, I realized that this wasn't handled by that. So um, we're going to need to write a little code around that. But first, it might be a good idea to see why this doesn't work. Um, I think it it's saying that it, they can't find the... Uh, oh, okay, so this is just a problem in my runner. Uh, I refactored which means that I could do that, but I actually, uh, I, I really like the idea of having the top, the most, the thing that we're running to be at the top level. So I'm just gonna move that back to there. So uh, let's make sure that's working. Yeah, it also occurs to me that I don't think I, checked in after the last episode. Let's see which episode are we on. Okay, there we go. So, um, All right. Sorry about that. Let's uh, let's get things a little bit cleaned up here. So where we were was we were just getting stock market unprimitive obsessified. And I'm taking gigantic steps here as opposed to usual because this really doesn't have its hooks in. We, we're doing the changing the primitive way earlier than we did with the dollars and uh, the stock market year class, so I feel much safer. Oh, I, you know, I did this last episode too. Um, darn it. Let's make sure I didn't. So I've got to implement something to, uh, to determine the number of years between two values. Because again, I really don't want, I want to deal with the domain concept, not with the underlying primitive. Uh, and we actually saw that there's a big cumulative rounding error happening. And the fact that I don't expose those primitives will make that easier to solve once I go into dollars and fix it. Okay, so um, let's see. call this number of years inclusive um, and take an ending year. Uh, so number of years inclusive between this year and uh, 2050 should be 41. And this is very specific to what I need. Um, I mean, better code or more complete code would deal with an ending year or a starting year and so forth, but I don't need to do that right now, so I'm not going to. go. 
I like having my two string and hash code and other boilerplate at the bottom. Again, it's about telling that story. Okay, so I think that's done now. Now I can come back here and uh, convert this. And I'm going to take this a little slower because I do need to check the use of that new method. Not as slow as I could take it, but a little bit slower. That method name is not super great, but I can't think of a better one offhand. Oh, we don't even need this method in this constructor anymore. Oh no, we do need that one. I'm sorry, I was thinking about I was thinking about stock market table model. test should pass. The application won't run. But now it should. Yeah. I'm not checking. I'm running it just to make sure that the stub the stub works, but um, I'm not checking that the code is working properly because I really do have trust in my tests um, that if I'm just making refactorings that they'll, it all continues to work. Now, sometimes that's not true, um, but I'm pretty confident for now. Again, you does check your assumptions, but once you've got the test in, you can count on the assumptions. If the assumptions were true before and they haven't changed, then the code should still work. Okay. that pretty. All right. Okay, what's next? Hmm. Well, let's take a look at our scratch pad. So stock market's using years. Looks like the next thing to do is to put finally get this fail fast in. Um, and then we've got this cumulative error and then looks like we'll go into polishing the UI. I think you guys might find that interesting because um, that's going to involve some of the hard stuff in UI testing. We'll have to figure out how to do TDD on swing view classes. which is going to be way different than doing TDD on these model classes which have allowed us to kind of ignore the UI entirely. So let's do that 
next and this. This needs to go here. And I think it's time we do the test check there. Okay, let's see if we can get the fail fast code in before the uh, time runs out. Okay, I'm not sure what to call this. I used to call it assume or assert, but it, then Java took that class name or something. Um, so now sometimes I'll call it assume or fail fast or require. Um, let's see if assume is already in use. Yeah, there's a J unit class called assume. Um, how about require? Okay, let's use require. Sometimes I'll use fail fast, but I'm still looking for the best name for this. And so what this is, is just going to be a bunch of little utility things to uh, make it easier to fail quickly when I need to. And what do we need so far? Okay, let's try that. So the format here is going to be require that um, something is some expression followed by some message. And when that expression is false, we should get an exception. Um, with the message we expect. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, this should, what's going on here? Okay, this should fail. It does. Um, and then to fix it, uh, we will do that next time. So uh, that's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.